today we are joined by Braca Getz, a Harvard-educated author of 41 children's books, who also did a candid memoir for adults about her journey to joy and how she overcame a food addiction. Thank you so much for joining. I think it's more important than ever to share the kind of behind the scenes and the real struggles of overcoming food addiction. I know I've had my own experience with that, and I know it's really difficult, especially in today's society. So if you can kind of get us started with telling us a little bit about yourself, maybe a little bit about your books and about your background and kind of um, how your personal journey has kind of led into maybe creating those books. Okay, wonderful. So I'm the author of 42 books. I say that all, all these books, they're unusual in that they help children's souls to shine. That's that's what they do. And and then just one book for adults, and that is my really candid memoir about how I developed food addictions and how I healed from them. And it it it's not a typical book either because I didn't really write the book. I I compiled it from like the highlights of my diaries. And then what I called my journal as I got older and and plus letters that I wrote and I filled in the missing pieces so so that you actually it's like a documentary. A person goes through me, goes with along with me, like developing, watching how the development happens of the food addictions and then experiencing the healing along with me because because actually through writing the book, that's when I get the clarity about how I was able to heal. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much for, for sharing that with us. And I know, especially when it comes to disordered eating, I feel like there are just so many messages out there to kids when they're young. And I just yeah. it's so important, especially to have the messaging from your books, especially when kids are young, to be able to help combat that as they get older. And so I, I really love that that you shared that with us. Can you share maybe some of the challenges that you may have faced while overcoming food addictions and how did you navigate through them? Yes. Oh, I also want to explain that the reason I write children's books is what you were saying. I want to help children from the beginning of life to understand what the purpose of life is, what what they're doing here and and give them happiness skills from the beginning of life because this is what i was missing and that's what i was searching for once i finally got those things those tools to understand how to navigate life that's when i could finally heal from the addiction so it's all connected like why i want to write the books to help young children to explain to them really how how to choose wisely in life and to explain to them that we're not just physical beings we're also souls that's the invisible part of us but it's our essence so that's what i'm explaining and then i'm explaining that 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 hunger that we feel that isn't satisfied that's our soul that's genuinely hungry. So that's why when we, we, when we finish eating, we can still be hungry, but it's not a physical hunger. When we finish like a good meal, we're still hungry. It's because we're searching for lasting pleasure in life. What, what pleasure really lasts? And that's, that's what I'm loving to share. And if, if we can learn that at the beginning of life, then we can lead much more joyful lives. Oh, I love that. That is just so powerful. And it's interesting you mentioned that because I've heard something similar before. I think I was like kind of in a, not a weight loss program, but kind of like a whole, like a journey. So it, it included kind of positive affirmations and also eating kind of more intuitively and kind of being more body positive as we kind of work towards that journey of just being of being healthy. And I, I think I remember one of the things that kind of came up is that when we're thinking about hunger is that maybe we're, you know, to try to be more intuitive to kind of in, in touch with ourselves and think about how we're feeling. 
maybe it's not that we're we're really that hungry, but maybe we're just needing some connection. Maybe we're needing a hug or maybe we're needing some personal time. And so I really love that you mentioned that because that, that kind of brought me back and made me kind of rethink that because our emotions are so connected. And I know a lot of folks are are struggling, you know, with depression and when they're maybe struggling with binge eating or, or something like that it inherently might be coming from something else that might be going on in, in their life that they're not getting. And so the intuition is kind of telling them to kind of self-soothe with food. And so I, I really love that you mentioned that. Yes, you explain that beautifully. Exactly. I, I, I suffered from like excessive dieting, fluctuating with the binge eating, which which makes so much sense. I mean, how long can a person restrict themselves? That That's not the way we want to live. So the way we want to live is to pour in the joy. We, we need more joy in our life, not less. So that's why when we really understand this, then we are able to live more joyfully and overcome the all types of addictions because we we come to understand what brings lasting pleasure in life like the reason we keep stuffing our faces is because the food is pleasurable it brings immediate pleasure i mean so does like drugs alcohol gambling what whatever the addiction is it brings immediate gratification immediate pleasure and if we want what we really want is lasting pleasure. So if we want the pleasure to keep lasting, why not just keep stuffing our faces? And then every, since we only experience that pleasure for the brief few moments that the food is in our, exp experiencing our taste buds, you know, for those few seconds, why not just keep eating then? And then the pleasure will keep on. But the problem is, like all those things, it's kind of a slow death. It's it, some, some of these addictions are faster ways to go than others, but it's it's very unhealthy for our bodies to keep doing that. It's so how how can we find lasting pleasure? That's really what I was searching for. I I, I went searching for it, like that's how I ended up going to Harvard originally because I was searching for like the wisdom in life, what was missing from my life, you know, and I was searching for that, the purpose of being here, what are we here to do? So I started studying really hard. I, I got in there. And while I was there, I was getting sicker and sicker. Like, again, I looked successful on the outside, but the addictions were getting worse and worse. And of course, what I was focused on like I was studying eating disorders. I was making breakthrough research during that time. And I even like wrote this chapter in a book and a textbook that's still used now in, in women's studies across the country. Cause at that time it was really groundbreaking research. And, but I myself was suffering more and more miserably within. So when I graduated from there, I went on to medical school and by then, I mean, the addictions were getting worse than ever. And with addictions, nobody knows how you're suffering because you're doing everything in secret. And it becomes harder and harder to keep your secrets, too. So it's like you're in a prison. And, and like you said, addictions is a lack of connect. The more we have this, we have a lack of connection. We have disengagement, loneliness, boredom, depression, anxiety. This becomes our prison. And what can get us out of the prison, like you were saying, is connection. And it's, it's finding the lasting pleasures in life. So what I learned finally as a young adult is is really ancient mystical wisdom. This is not coming from my own head. And it's something called the pleasure ladder. And the pleasure ladder has five rungs on it, which correspond to our five fingers, because we have the power in our own hands to bring lasting pleasure into our life. And we have that reminder right in front of us with our hands at every moment that we can bring this 
tremendous amount of pleasure into our lives. So if you want, I- I'd love to share with you what what the five rungs on the pleasure ladder are. Yes, please do. I, I love, I'm so, I'm so curious to know now that you mentioned that. Yeah, please, please do share it with us. Okay, great. So I, the, the lowest, the five levels of pleasure, they correspond to the five levels of the human soul. And the lowest part of the soul is the part that's attached to our bodies. So at this lowest, the lowest level of pleasure, we experience it when we experience any natural sensual pleasure that our senses can enjoy because like all the natural food, it was designed for us to experience them with pleasure. I mean, we could have just needed tasteless pills and and that would be enough nutrition for us every day, but no, it's meant to be pleasurable. So, so there's the natural foods, there's being in nature, there's music, there's, there's being active. Our bodies are designed to move. There's swimming, yoga, dancing, gardening, all these natural pleasures. You know, when people tell us these are things that, that can uplift you when you're depressed, now we can understand why. Because this is how the the lowest level of the soul is nourished through all these pleasures when we experience them with gratitude. That's that's the missing piece that I didn't know about. It's the gratitude that changes everything. When we experience any of those natural pleasures with mindful gratitude, it nourishes not only our body, but also our souls at that time. So that's the first level of pleasure. The second level is very surprising because it's love. And we think of love as being dependent on someone else. Like, how can we bring love into our lives at any moment if nobody's there? That's the thing. It, with this, the, the ancient mystical understanding of love is focusing on the virtues of another. And we can do that even in prison, even in the prison of addiction, or even even in a in a in the prison of like um solitary confinement. A, a person could focus on a grandmother that that once did a kindness for them, and they are instantaneously uplifted, uplifted spiritually inspired to be a better person, just thinking of someone that once did a kindness for them. And that's how we can bring this warm emotional feeling into our lives at any moment, this this pleasure. So so the lowest level is connecting to another natural thing. The second level up, we are connecting to another being. They don't even have to be present but we are connecting to them spiritually in gratitude, focusing on their virtues. And that brings us a more lasting pleasure. Each one up is more connection and more pleasure, more lasting pleasure. So the middle level is doing something meaningful, positive and meaningful in the world. And I was on another show. And when I got up to this level, the host said that he was feeling miserable and lonely the, the the day before and he he after he finished two slices of pizza that he was eating by himself he was about to plow through the whole rest of the box of pizza when knock knock there's a door uh, someone knocks on his door it's his neighbor and his neighbor needs help for 2 minutes after he helps his neighbor he comes back and he, he doesn't want the pizza anymore. He push, puts the rest in the fridge for the next day. Like what happened? What changed during that time that he helped his friend, helped his neighbor? Wow. He, I, I love that. Yeah. He, he filled up with, he, he filled up being grateful that he could help somebody else. Right. He felt that connection. He gave of himself into the world. So. That also fills us up 
instantaneously in the moment when we do something meaningful, giving back to the world with gratitude, that also fills us up. So now we're up to the next to the last. The second highest level is very interesting. It's creativity. When, when we, it's when we put a unique part of ourselves into the world, like, like anybody could have helped his neighbor, but it's when we do something like a un, that's uniquely us and we put it out into the world. We are on a high that like, we don't feel like eating or sleeping when we're, when we're in that zone of creativity and we don't even notice time is passing. It's like such a high to be in that zone of creativity. And we can't be in it all the time, but, but, but when we do spend time there, it's a tremendous high and it's a tremendous pleasure, a lasting pleasure. And when we do it with gratitude, then there's no ego involved or very little because we just feel like the channel of of creative energy flowing through us. And, and then we don't have that feeling like there's no competition. It's just a joyful experience. It's, it's, so that's, that's the second highest level. And the highest level of all is called transcendence. It's, it's when we, 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 we recognize that we are connected to everybody. Everybody's connected to us and we're all connected to the same source energy. And it's flowing through all of us. And like, like the, the vegetation is giving us the oxygen we need. We're giving carbon dioxide back out to the, to the, all the vegetation that needs it. And it's also like, when we transcend our own limitations and we we like make that first crack in a bad habit we we transcend who we are last moment and we become a new person this moment like we we recognize that we're always evolving and that's like such a high to do something new that you haven't tried before it's like a tremendously we're tremendously grateful and the veils of separation between all of us lift. And it's like what we feel under a starry, starry sky at night when we know we're a part of a much greater universe. I, I remember that joy that stayed with me forever, like out in the country when you're under the stars, you can bring that back into your life because it's a lasting pleasure of like tremendous transcendent gratitude. So, all these five levels are available to us. The pleasure ladder is available to us at any moment. And there's only one price to pay to climb any rung on that pleasure ladder. And that is gratitude. That is that is all we need to experience this lasting pleasure. I'm so glad you mentioned that. It's just so beautifully worded. And it's something that I definitely can relate to. And it's it's interesting that you mentioned connecting spiritually. I actually am part of uh, this group. We like to call ourselves the dream team. And we're across different continents and time zones. And the whole purpose, I think what comes down to it is that we uplift one another and we can wow. another, you know, if there's something positive happening, or maybe someone's going through like different struggles, we are all there to support and uplift one another. And it's just, as you mentioned, it's just amazing to be able to to connect with with folks on a deeper, more spiritual level, even if we can't be physically uh, present with one another, we're there and connected. Yes. And so it's just an amazing, amazing experience. And it just, I know it's had a huge impact on my life, even though maybe I can't always see my friends in person. Yes. Now we're spiritually connected. We're, we're uplifting and supporting one another. And I, I know I, I really like that you mentioned creativity as well, because I, I've always been a creative person, if I if I must say, because I yeah. have always loved painting and drawing. And wow, uh, as you mentioned, I I there is a certain high that you kind of get with that, especially when you complete the work and like, wow, I I completed that, and it's just it, it's almost kind of like a dopamine hit because it's like yeah, you just sometimes it's hard for me to admit that, but I'm like, you know what, I I I 
like three hours later, I'm like, I did that. And they're like, sometimes when I find myself kind of maybe a little depressed or, may, or maybe like want to self-soothe with food or something like yes. that, I try to think, what are some ways that I can kind of get that, not necessarily dopamine rush, but kind of get that high without doing that. Or, you know, another thing sometimes I've struggled with is going shopping and maybe spending yes. more than I should be yeah. spending. And I'm, I'm, you know, kind of releasing my, like, kind of, if I'm in a depressive moment and, and, and like what they, what they call retail therapy. And so, yes. <laughs> so sometimes yeah. I'm struggling with that. I'm like, what's another way that I can, you know, kind of self-soothe and kind of release that without, you know, going into debt or things like that. Yes. Um, and for me, it's been creativity, whether it's, you know, working on this podcast, which I really love. Yeah. Like painting and reading. I love, of course, creating videos as well. So I try to think about like, what else like can I do to kind of like, you know, that brings me immense joy. And usually those are the things that bring me joy. And I also love to write too. So I try to kind of separate myself from that and like, okay, recognize that I have this moment of okay, I really want to go buy something. Like, okay, uh, but I it's not in my budget right now. So what else yeah. can I do to kind of bring me that joy and gratitude that doesn't involve my bank account, right? <laughs> Beautiful. So, you know, it's been immensely helpful to kind of recognize those moments. And I love that you mentioned, you know, like the, the pizza example. I, that's just like such a profound example because you know, yeah. I'm a foodie. I I love food. I love trying different types of food. And so I've tried to throughout my life kind of reconcile, like, is there a way I can enjoy food in a healthy way? You know, being able to try different things. Yes. So I think for me, it's what's helped me personally is because I've, I've kind of like had moments of, you know, like, as you mentioned, like, you know, that the food has to have an enjoyable taste. Otherwise we're not going to want to eat. Right. So yes. we have to enjoy it. So, and unlike a lot of other addictions, I feel like it's even harder because, you know, we all have to eat. Yes. And so like trying to find that balance. And I know for me, like what I'll usually try and do is like maybe during dinner time, I'll kind of explore different cuisines, I'm like and kind of meal plan in a way that I'm like, okay, I'm really looking forward to dinner because I'm having like having this and like having kind of controlling the portion sizes and and like maybe if I'm at an event, maybe just like sampling just a little bit of everything so that way I'm yeah. to have that enjoyment of trying different cuisines but not overdoing it. Right. Exactly. That when we when we go to events, it's sometimes the hardest yeah. because like if we're in an uncomfortable situation, we feel we're not so much in control of the situation, whatever, you know. So like the good thing to think about is all these other things that bring us pleasure, like like even stepping outside for a few minutes to feel the sunshine or focusing on someone that looks lonely, like going over and befriending someone, giving giving of yourself, you know, think of other ways besides all the food. The, usually it's like excessive food at these events. Like, so, so we can like think about what else can I do to bring pleasure into my life right now? You know, there's so many other ways to experience great gratitude. And, 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 and we, we overeat because we feel a scarcity of pleasure in our life. Like there's not enough, so I better keep eating because this is giving me pleasure. But the minute we become aware in our minds that there's truly an abundance of pleasures available to us every moment, it changes everything. Then we don't have to consume everything that's being served. Yeah. Then we could do so many other things that we know also bring us pleasure. Yeah. I think a lot of people really struggle with the the scarcity mindset. I know I, I got right. all in it, especially of course during COVID when everyone was hoarding food and I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah, myself. And I think for me also, if I'm really enjoying something, you know, but I'm I, I'm trying to recognize my hunger cues better to be like, okay, you know, I'm getting kind of full. You know, if I have leftovers, it's okay. It that's that'll be there tomorrow. Maybe it'll be yes. And trying to kind of recognize that and, and stop myself in that way. And the same thing 
you know, when like going shopping and, you know, especially like yes. during COVID and like, okay, th- th- that scarcity mindset really does a lot to, to a person. And especially like now that things have calmed down, I think for me, like kind of recognizing like, okay, if I really need that item, I can go back to the store. And yes. Get- and, and, and I think that it can be applied to to so many things like exactly I'm eating something or if like, okay, I can't fish it. It'll be there later. If I get hungry, it'll be there later. Exactly. Uh, so I think that it, it really helps to be able to identify that. And and yeah, because I think the scarcity mindset is, is really a struggle for so many people. Exactly. That fear, you know, it's that lower part of our brain gets activated and we're like, I'm so afraid I won't have enough there's not enough, not enough pleasure. And I'm afraid. So I better do the, it's, it's that whole lower part of the brain. And if we can pause mindfully, then we get the neurons flowing to the prefrontal cortex, the top part of the brain. And we can think, is it my body that's hungry or my soul? Like, like I just had a decent meal, a nutritious meal. Why do I feel like I should keep eating? Oh, because I want pleasure to continue. That's what we're here for. We are really here on earth to experience the greatest pleasure possible. But we think it means just stuffing our faces. No, it means being grateful. That's how we can experience the greatest pleasure possible. The more we practice gratitude, the more grateful we become. It just we become more grateful people the more that we practice it. It's amazing. So we we actually create more of those neural pathways in our brain so that it becomes easier and easier to be grateful. Yeah, absolutely. I, I 100% agree with that. And kind of it's and it's interesting because like you know sometimes throughout like my my work day and my I, my nine to five, I find myself like wanting to eat a little bit more, but right. when I'm like maybe traveling or I'm like immersed in writing something or painting something, right? I don't think about food, and so exactly, it's kind of crazy, like how that works. Because like I actually recently just came back from from Europe, and I the days were just so busy and so packed, and it was just like so much going on, like so many things to experience that. I'm not even thinking about that. And so it's, it's interesting. Yes. The mind works in that way. Exactly. So like, let's say you're sitting there and you're bored a little bit at work, you know, you can, I don't know if you can play some music in the background. Oh, and, yeah. And then stretch and dance a little, move a little, <laughs> even just those few moments, then the work becomes more enjoyable again. You've moved your body, you know, it's like, or... Or, or while you're working, how can I do this in a more kind way? How can I bring happiness to se- all of that? You can add in all the different parts and it transforms every moment, no matter what we're doing. It's incredible. Yeah. That, that, that abundance mindset, the gratitude mindset, we can, or even being creative. How could I, how could I do more, my work more creatively? You know, eh, it just comes up. In every way you can add in and get on that pleasure lo- ladder at any moment of the day. If it, with the awareness, with the awareness of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it's interesting you mentioned that because on my way to work and, and at my desk, sometimes, like, as you mentioned, listening to music, it makes a huge difference. Sometimes yes. I'll be listening to podcasts and yes, you know, it, it'll engage my mind in a different way. And I, I know for me, especially when I'm working on something creatively, something about listening to music or, you know, sometimes your favorite songs, it just kind of gives you that boost. And like, especially yeah. like, um, it's in the morning. I'm on my way to work. I'm tired. I'm trying to get ready for the day. I'm usually rushing out the door. And so like, just even in that 20 minutes that I'm, I'm listening to music, like it really sets the tone for yes. today. And so by the time I get to work, I'm excited and I'm animated. I'm ready to go. And so like, yeah, I love that you mentioned that. Exactly. And, 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 and lingering in the pleasure of it, that that's when we can experience that gratitude, like savoring it. Wow, this is such a joy to hear this music and to move my body a little bit. It's it, it the, we we spend we we we're not used to lingering in joy, and the more we do, oh my gosh! Again, 
it just gets easier and easier to do it. Like one of the other things I learned is like not preparing your next fork full or spoonful of food until you've like fully chewed what's in your mouth. Well, that was so hard for me when I, I started practicing it and I saw that I was always putting in the next thing before I had to really slow down. And then when I do that, you can actually focus on enjoying what's already in your mouth before putting in the next thing. And that extends to your whole life because then you start appreciating what you already have and you're not trying to take the next bite out of life already. You know, it's, it's, it, it becomes like a metaphor for, for living. Yes. Yes. It's so wonderful. So I, 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 I think through, through overcoming these addictions, I, first of all, I think that people that have addictions are usually very sensitive souls. They're people whose souls are like right out there. They're aware of them. They're aware of the emptiness and they're trying desperately to fill it. But, but external things don't fill that hole because, because we're much more than physical beings. And we, we have that spiritual hole on purpose because we got to nourish it with gratitude. So, this is the way to really, really have a joyful life. Yeah, I I a hundred percent agree, especially when you're struggling with, with addiction. And I think a lot of people on some level might be aware that they're struggling with it, but it's like this vicious cycle. And each time, like when you as you mentioned, like you need that connection and 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 you have a need that you need to fulfill, it it's you're really torn and, and and it's just, I think it's really hard for, especially a lot of our listeners might be struggling with this is that it might be really hard to stop. Maybe there's like, I don't, depending on, you know, if there's something that's difficult going on in your, your life and, and maybe that's like the one thing that's, you know, keeping you going. I think it mm-hmm. would be a struggle for a lot of folks. Yes. The, the, the secret is identifying what brings you more pleasure than eating. Like, on that Netflix show, My 600 Pound Life, everybody, they all say the same thing. F- food is the only thing bringing me pleasure. That's it. it the, the prison has gotten that narrow. The walls are that narrow. I remember being in that prison. So to get out of it, you have to to overcome a habit. You need a greater and more lasting pleasure to sub in. That lasting pleasure is gratitude. Practicing that is what helps us to break out of where we're stuck with our addictions. It, it feels silly at first, but you start with the smallest thing. I, I love to give the example of an orange. An orange is, first of all, the fruit, they're green. They're green before they're ready for us. They're camouflaged in with the leaves so they can become ready. And then when they become bright and beautiful, they're beautiful to look at, vivid colors. And and then they smell beautiful. All our senses are involved. And then we they're individually packaged. We we take we take off the peel, and the sweet juiciness is preserved in there for months for us to enjoy. And then we enjoy it. And what we're left with are the seeds and the seeds, they can become infinite more trees and infinite more oranges if they go back into the ground as they were meant to be. So, so you see that like in a little seed, in a little orange, there's so much wisdom and there's so much loving kindness packed in there for each of us. And and when we really experience just that, just an orange, we can experience just an orange alone with so much gratitude. So we all have so much to be grateful for. So many illnesses we don't have, all the parts of our body that are working right this moment. It's we all have an endless amount of things to be grateful for. And we have a saying, an ancient saying, who is rich? those who are grateful for what they have. That is so true. And it's interesting you mentioned when we slow down and truly appreciate, especially something that's like what we're eating. It's it's funny. My, I always give my husband a bad time. He's a slow eater, but 
he has to keep going, you know, because I've always yes. been a majorly fast eater. Yeah. I've noticed when I've really slowed down to enjoy something, because I truly believe that no one should deprive themselves of any foods that they really love. Yeah. But for me, like sometimes it's like if I'm craving like a cookie once in a while, yeah. I'll have like maybe one or two. And then I really just kind of take that time as I'm eating it to kind of appreciate and enjoy those, those flavors. Beautiful. And kind of get that experience. And I find that once I have that, I don't need to go back for uh, more. And you, I think a lot of people really struggle with that. And yeah. they, they think they need to deprive themselves of it Absolutely. to have success. And I, I definitely don't think anyone should have to be able to do that. As you mentioned, just be able to slow down and enjoy it. And I find that it, that really helps with, satisfying that craving. Beautiful. Pour in the joy. Exactly. Exactly. Then we won't need any longer the whole container of ice cream, the whole box of chocolate chip cookies, the whole bag of potato chips. That's how I used to live. So I totally relate to it. And a, a, a lot of the junk was designed that way to just keep oh, it yeah. desi designed to be addictive. So the more the more we can eat the like healthy things that were designed out of loving kindness, the better. But, you know, whatever we're having to experience it with gratitude and it's, it's, it's a tremendous secret to happiness. Yeah. And kind of thinking a little bit about that, is there any words of maybe encouragement or advice that you might have for listeners who might just be getting started in their own journey to joy? It, it's it's like the seeds. We all you have to do is plant one tiny seed. Be grateful for one thing right now. Just be grateful. Then you've practiced it. That's it. You have planted a seed. That seed becomes a tree, and it brings fruit forever and ever. Each moment of gratitude is a moment you're not spending being miserable. So just be be grateful for any moment of gratitude, and it, and and when you're not, okay, say all right, I wasn't, but I'll be, I can be grateful the next moment. It's always available. One hundred percent, and and it's interesting you mentioned that because I kind of would like to liken that to like if if anyone's getting started on maybe a mindful eating or even a fitness journey. I know a lot of times people will want to go from like one to a hundred. Mm -hmm. I think it's just those small steps when we start any new practice, starting small because that's a little bit more doable and attainable. Because otherwise, if you're just trying to go in full force and you're like, okay, I can't do this and you're getting frustrated. And I think that's really difficult for a lot of folks. But yeah, a hundred percent, I think small and simple steps when beginning like any new mindful practice is, is key. For sure. and, and celebrate that small step. Yeah. Just just enjoy it. Don't even worry about the next one. Just be so happy. You know, I used to, I tell people, if you had 10 cookies, okay, be grateful you didn't have 50. You had 50, be grateful you didn't have 250. Exactly. You, yeah. you can always be grateful for something. Yes. Oh, that's so true. And I know for me personally, sometimes I really, I really have to motivate myself to work out and motivation can be fleeting. And so I'm like, should I work out today? Should I not work out today? But what I found is that I'm like, okay, instead of 40 minutes, maybe I can work out for just 20 minutes today. Yeah. And that kind of keeps me going because if I miss one workout, I find it gets it, the next day and the next day it gets really harder. And then suddenly you realize, okay, I just totally fell off track. I'm frustrated. And so I'm like, okay, I could do 10 to 20 minutes today. And it, it helps with that consistency. <laughs> exactly. And do what you enjoy. There's yeah. so many different ways to work out. Yeah. Do the things that you love the most. It's just, and then it's like a, such a pleasure. Yeah. yeah. And when you're just beginning and you haven't been exercising, oh my goodness, just just move your neck around, just move your head around, just move your fingers and your hands. Everything feels good. Be grateful for that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you mentioned that because I know like, and especially like friends and family, everyone has such a, a different way and different types of workouts that maybe bring them joy. I, I have friends who aren't really gym people. I have friends who are more into like biking or going to walks or going hiking. And I know my husband's not really a gym person. And I've kind of fluctuated in between the two. 
But I found like having that variety, trying different things kind of keeps me going, keeps things interesting. And so I think it, it depends on the person, but I feel like it's so important to recognize that there's like never like a one size. Fit. Yeah, exactly. There really is an abundance <laughs> of ways to be to to experience lasting pleasure in this world. That's that was the revelation in my life that changed everything. Then there was no longer a need for the addictions mm. because the addictions come from wanting control, yeah. not trusting life. You don't trust life. You got to just stuff your face. I mean, that's that's the way I felt, you know, because it was a scary world. Then when you begin to trust, I at that point, the world was very gray. It lost all of its colors. And through living a life of gratitude, the colors return and the world becomes vibrant again. Yes. That's what I, I hope for everybody. Yeah. And it's funny. I want to share a, a little experience actually from my mom. And I know she was actually struggling with the food addiction. I know she'd be okay with me sharing a little bit of her, her story, but she actually loves going on walks daily. And she was telling me, she's like, when she's out there walking, like she's embracing all the stimuli, the different smells. And, and it so really brings her joy now. So she's able to kind of appreciate, have this new sense of appreciation that she didn't have before when she was really struggling with a food addiction. And so it's just been amazing. Wow. Formative to kind of, to see her do that. And so, yeah, it's it's really cool with kind of seeing like a transformative journey like that and just yes. embracing like the little things that you wouldn't expect that would bring you joy. Exactly. That's yeah. it. It's the little things. We'll look back and we'll realize really the little things were the big things. That's it. <laughs> exactly. Now, I want to thank you so much for your time. Would you be able to share with our listeners? Where, tell us where we can find you, where we can buy your books. If you have social media, a website, anything that you'd like to share with us, I'll also be sure to include that down in the show notes as well. Oh, the best way is my website where you can find me. And also, there's a place, there's a tab on my website where people can download a free copy of the Pleasure Ladder chart where you could put it, you could download it and put it on your fridge or your cupboard. And, and whenever you feel like overeating, you could look at it and remember the abundance of ways to, to fill yourself up. So yeah, I hope people will visit my website, um, www.getsbookshop.com and gets is spelled that funny way, G-O-E-T-Z. So yeah, and, 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 and definitely download the, the chart. Awesome. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate your time and our wonderful conversation. And I can't wait for our listeners to hear it. Such a pleasure. You resonate so much, Valerie. It was such a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Thank you.